Hey creative friends, it's Gwen and I'm back today with an organizing video. I have pulled out my Distress Oxides and I want to share with you how I store them. I think you might find this super helpful. So first up, I have actually swatched out all of the colors. I have done this on a watercolor paper. I just grabbed a paper punch and punched out a bunch of empty uh, squares. I've popped them onto a jump ring and then every time I get a new color, I swatch it out and add the water and then write on the back what color it is. And I find this super helpful because I never really know what the true match is until I can see it swatched out. Like for example, this one I believe is abandoned coral. Look at the difference there. So the color on the packaging, whilst I'm sure they do a very good job and they try their best, doesn't always exactly match the ink color, especially to I feel with the oxides because it's got that oxidization. It does sort of change the look of the um, color itself. So I do like to have it swatched out and I never remember what color it is. So I just pop that onto the back. So that's that. Now, in terms of the ink itself, I like to use these inks with applicators. So what I have actually done in this little baggie here, I have bought a bunch of the, um, what do they call these? The daubers, the, the applicator brushes, and a bunch of the actual pads that go with them. So these are actually all of my, um, like the handle part and then my spares for the foam pieces. And I do have a few of those because I don't like to chop and change. I don't like to get my hands dirty when I'm working with ink. So I don't wanna to have to chop and change colors. So to avoid that, I've got lots of handles. I think, you know what? I think it's actually only two packets, but yeah, that's that. I also have in here my um, brushes, my blending brushes. I do have two of those. Um, not that they've been used very much. Um, so there's those. Um, they stay in this little pouch here with all of the distress oxides as well. Oh, that one's being used a bit. I think I'm going to go warm and cool just to try and, like, obviously I'm not going to be able to get, um, like, a brush for every colour. So I'm just going to go with warm tones and cool tones to avoid any cross-mixing of colours. Now... These little pads, obviously they fit perfectly on here like so, but did you know that they also fit perfectly into these bead storage containers? So I'm sorry about the glare. These are like a clear plastic um, container and they come with the little containers inside them. These are actually for bead storage. So when you go to look them up, they will be under bead storage. What I will do is try and leave a link. It may not be this exact one, but I'll try and find one that's very, very similar um, that I can link to so you can um, check it out. And so for each color, I have one of these containers and then an abbreviation of the color. So this is spun sugar, um, squeezed lemonade. So you can't, obviously I'm not gonna be able to fit the full color on there. So I just do the first three letters of each. Um, that one's Tattered Rose. This one's Tumble Glass. So even I don't really use these that often, but I do recognize the, the, the name. Um, so yeah, so these fit in here. And then what I can do if I want to use a color is just to pick it up like so. And I love how they store in there and all the mess, if there is any, can stay in this piece. I also, it also means that I don't actually clean the pads. I know, right? Um, I don't feel like I have to because none of the color is going to get like crossed over. So I am totally okay with that. So that's that. So I'll show you the back just so you can see all the pretty colors. Now for the ink, I actually just store them stacked. Uh, I don't keep them in any kind of color order or anything. I think they stack super well. Originally, I had put the little um, pads on the back here. You can see that the damage that that's been that that was done, and I hated it because they would never sit 
like stacked, like they would be all over the place because that pad would not allow them to sit uh, nice and flat and stacked. So ditched that, would not recommend that. Uh, but what I also have done is labelled each of the sides of the um, pad with just that same um, Dymo label. I know you can get little um, stickers and stuff and you can ink them and stuff, but for me, for what I use them for, it wasn't really worth the time investment. I thought this was just a bit simpler, a bit faster, and I know that when I go to look for my colours, I'm going to have my swatch the other thing I think with the swatch is that at least with a swatch, you can sort of hold it up and against pattern paper. Whereas if it's swatched sort of on the side here, you're kind of going to be going like this to get like that real true uh, color. So yeah, I do like, I do like that. And I like to, when you're using, when you want to combine colors, you can pull these swatches off and you can go, oh, it does. Does that sponge sugar really go with the milled lavender? Oh, yes, that's quite pretty. You can see them side by side. Yeah, you can see them side by side like this too, but I don't know. I just prefer it on a piece of separate paper. I also store in that drawer this fabulous little brush. This is the one that I've just discovered and love so, so much. And my goal for 2023 is definitely to get a little bit more use out of the Distress Oxides. I don't use them enough considering the amount that I have. I'm sure some of you might be quite surprised by just how many I have, um, considering, yeah, I don't do a lot of mixed media. However, that's gonna change. And I will say, out of all of the inks and um, like mixed media sort of supplies, the Distress Oxides do appeal to me the most. I really love the softness of them. I love that there's colors that are very muted and pastel. They're very more, very much so my vibe. I know there's super bright dark ones as well, but obviously you get to choose what you buy and I can hand pick out the ones that are more, you know, in my vibe. So there's that. That's how I store my Distress Oxides. I hope this video has helped you if you're sorting and organizing your craft room. If you're looking for a full craft room tour, I have made one. I think you'll enjoy this one. I'll leave a link to it here and I'll see you all in the next video. Until then, bye.